Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 332 at scavengerlife.com. So, a week ago, we talked about, in our endless way, about our way of a listing, which is a list it and forget it. <laughs> yes. Uh, I guess we always just try and find, like, different kind of angles on our way of selling. And we also kind of come up with different ways we think about it, you know. And Yeah. Uh, you know, over time we see why it works for us. Or why it doesn't work and then we change it. Yeah. But it was interesting. We got some interaction from some people, probably a newer people that don't know us very well. Because we've talked about this many, many times where they get upset because they say, well, we don't really elicit and forget it, you know. And they bring up examples of when we do change the price of our items. Right. And, yeah, exactly. I mean, we still do touch you know, like a look at our items and we will change prices in certain circumstances. Right. And I think the key here is that that is a very small percentage. Like we will go up through, like you said, like last week we went through and looked at some of the bulky items that we see in our storage and we're like, that thing's huge. I want it gone. That's a handful of things out of 6,000 items. Yeah. So it's so minimal. I just think for us, we don't have a system where we're attending to our items. So, you know, some people, like every 30 days, they will re list their... They end them, the, the items, and then they put them back up on eBay, hoping to get higher in the uh, a search terms. For every... You know, there are people yeah. who do their whole store. Some people have you know, a, a small amount of inventory, I mean, a small amount of storage space, so they right. can't have a lot of items. So after, they might put their items on auction for a week, and, a, and if things that don't sell after a week, they automatically, it's reduced the price by 25%. Right, systematic, like that right. is their system. Right, so they're always kind of keeping track of their inventory, and they never let anything right. stay in their store for... A long period of right. time because to them it's not worth keeping that in there because they have little space or they don't have the patience or they just don't feel like it's worth it. Anyway, as always, we never say our way is the best. We're just sharing what works for us. Right. And because we have not allowed storage to hinder us, our strategy of having a large inventory and just a, just continue instead of worrying about why the stuff we have doesn't sell we just put more stuff up <laughs> because we know every day That's things funny. just seem to sell and like i said in the last podcast i am just amazed like every day we will wake up and something sells and i will say maybe not out loud but in my head i'll say i can't i didn't even know we had that item like <laughs> that we've had that for a couple of years i forgot we even had it right. but we just made forty dollars you know yeah like this morning we sold a men's coat for sixty dollars, and I and we know it's old because I'm the one who is uh, modeling it. Right. And we haven't done that for two years. Yeah. So uh, it's funny how I can just tell by the style of our photos the era of yeah. when it was put in exactly. our store. You know. The the good thing about certain items like that, too, is that you're like, all right, maybe yeah. I won't buy that again in the future. Or if I do, I'm going to put it at a different price point so it might sell faster, you know? Yeah, I mean, as we've always said, the most important thing is that we each have our own process that doesn't burn us out, right. you know? It, I don't care if someone says, this is the best way to do it. That does not a matter if we get bored and get overly stressed out right. and then it's want to quit doing this after a couple of a months. You know, we have to come up with the, a method that works for us. Yeah, and also, like, something we always say to ourselves and on the podcast and to other people, if something's not working or you want to change or someone makes a suggestion, hey, try this, and you're like, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're not locked into any of this. That's right. that's the beauty of working for yourself and running your own business is that you're like, huh, let's try this thing. Right. You know, or like I'll talk about it later. You know, just people, people, especially on the forum and through phone calls are like, hey, you should try this. It's actually great. And we're like, what? Right. That happens all the time. Yep. It has happened at least a handful of times where we've... We have changed the way we do yes. our business in a significant way. Yes. I think I can count four or five times because 
someone's popped up and gone on the uh, its forums or sent us an email to to tell us a different way of doing it, and we're like, that's a Brilliant, that's a great idea, brilliant. right? Yeah. And you try it, and it works, or yeah. it doesn't work, and then you just go from there. And then there's plenty of other people who have said, well, here's how I do it. And I'm like, that's cool, but if I did that, I would hate my life. So, right. You know. <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah. and that's the thing where, you know, when a new people hear us or they email us, I mean, I always just try and tell them, like, there's no best way to do right. eBay. If you can sell one thing on eBay, it's you can sell a thousand things. Yeah. And so just figure out the way to incorporate it into it's your life because some people have families right. and jobs and they have to do it differently than people like yeah. us that have no families and no families. kids yeah. and we don't have another job so right. we can do it differently right okay exactly. i was thinking this week yes i wanted to hear the most extreme scavenging confession yes so that's very good uh you know if you're a scavenger <laughs> You've probably done something that you would probably not tell anybody else because they would think it'd be so extreme. They'd be like, you're insane for doing Or that. tell normal people who aren't scavengers. Right. But because no one else can hear this about, except all of us. <laughs> this is our little secret society. We can actually tell each other the thing you've scavenged that uh, you'd never tell a normal person. Right. So I'll tell you mine. Okay. Yep. So I've done this at least three or four times when I go yes. when we go to a thrift store and we're buying jackets or pants and when we'll bring them home you know it's most times there's n there's not anything in the pockets because right. they've already gone through them every once in a while I will find a chapstick a used yes. chapstick yes and I love it because I I love chapstick I, yeah. I use it all the time <laughs> And I will just take it, and I just simply open it up. It's obviously, you know, someone else has been using it. Sometimes I find chapstick from, like, the 90s. Yeah, it's but, still good. But, you know, it's a petroleum product, <laughs> so right. it'll last forever. And I just simply wipe off the top. Yeah, wipe off you know? the top. I mean, I, I sometimes will even just cut off the top, and then the arrest is fine. Yeah. Because the person's uh, its mouth didn't get all the way down. Right. And then I, I use it. And, and you're fine. And I love it. And you're not dead. Yep. And if I told someone else that, they'd think They'd be crazy. like, you're the grossest person. Now, I know, I think I know what your most extreme scavenging Yeah, because you were there is. when it happened. But I don't know if, if there's something even more. Okay, this is, no, this is a pretty good one. Um, this is kind of equivalent to dumpster diving food, right? Wouldn't you say? This is kind of like dumpster diving. Well, but this is it. extreme. Let's hear it. This is like, okay, so in our neighborhood in the past, we've noticed that there's like certain people that just like throw garbage out of their cars, right? And they throw mostly fast food bags and cups and stuff like that. So one day we're driving, normally we pull over and pick up the trash because we're nerds like that and I don't want trash in my neighborhood. So one night, this is this is pretty late at night. It was like 10 o'clock at night. There's a fast food bag right in the middle of the road. And we're like, all right, there's nobody around. Let's pick it up. It's safe. You know, we're in the middle of the road, whatever. We pick it up. <laughs> and I'm like, there's food in here. And it's still hot. There's a hot cheeseburger. McDonald's cheeseburger. Right? In the wrapper. Rat. Not run over. Right. Like someone threw it out. And literally just drove yeah. away one second ago, right? I totally ate it. <laughs> and Ryan, without I was hesitation, like, no way. of course I'm eating. This. No conversation. <laughs> you just opened it, and by the time we we're in our driveway, like it gone. was gone. You just ate it. I loved it. I think that's when I fell in love with you again. Oh please, that's like, gross. Why? Um, <laughs> it's, so gross. it's just funny. <laughs> so yeah, so so well, the okay, road burger. You it's know. a road burger, yep. right? But that, that's what's funny. It wasn't run over. You're like, it's not like got flies on it. Someone just, like probably the car right in front of us had like thrown it out. If that makes you feel better, it that's does. good. Um, yeah. So that reminds me of people who dumpster dive food, yep. basically. Yep. They're like, this food's fine. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. It's, it's no wrapped up. And Ryan, it, you're here to tell the tale, so obviously it I'm was not okay. dead. Yeah. I did not die. And it can't be anything worse than what they put in McDonald's hamburgers <laughs> exactly. to begin with, so it's fine. <laughs> Uh, and then before we talk about, uh, you know, our eBay life, uh, a couple other things. Yeah. Uh, so kind of on, you know, scavenged food, we've yes. talked about before, we love to go shopping at this discount. It's grocery store. Right. In our area. It's like a regional grocery store owned, owned by these 
two people, this couple that started it, they're like uh, it's they're Mennonites. Mennonites. Yeah. And so they're all about like being, saving Super its money. It's called Sharp Shopper. And so what they do is they they buy food that's about to expire. Right. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's like six months away. Sometimes it's a month away. And we love right. going there because those of us in the know understand that those expiration dates doesn't mean like as soon it's as rotting. that comes, it rots. It's just, I don't know. They put it on there for, I guess, safety or because the the product manufacturers don't want this stuff to sit on shelves. They want it to be taken off right. so a new stuff can right. get put on. Anyway. I will say this, though. Right. I mean, expiration dates are good and there is regulation for a reason because you don't want manufacturers to be like, I'm just going to sell this two-year-old yeah, thing and nobody sure. knows, you right. know? Uh, so there right. is a reason for it. But the great thing is you can just use it as a suggestion. Right. And, you know, obviously you know? things like milk, that, you know, and like yeah. meat, I mean, stuff like that, like fresh food will be pretty close to the expiration date, obviously. But, but the great thing about Sharp Shopper is... They throw the meat in the freezer. Right. If they're like, this is expiring this week, yep. freeze it. Yep. And then you buy it frozen. Yep. Fine. It's totally good. So we always love to go uh, and we uh, buy food like we buy scavenge stuff. When, when we find a good deal, we go all in. You know, we'll buy like a cartload of it and then just store it and right. then eat on it. Right. Well, this week we found olive oil. Look. We use olive oil a lot. Just like most people, yeah. we cook a lot. We, we cook almost all our meals when, right. when, when we're at home. Um, so the thing is, we're always, and we have two rentals that we keep olive oil filled up all the time, right? So that stuff's running out all the time. Anytime we find a good price, because it's expensive. It's like 20 to 30 cents an ounce. Um, for olive oil, if you buy like the non fancy stuff, just the regular stuff, so we found we found it at Sharp Shopper for nine cents an ounce. Right. That's like half to like a quarter of the price. Yep, and you know it, we're like those nerds that are sitting there it's with our phones, with our calculators, trying to calculate, or we'll scan it just to see how much it sells at a Walmart. So we spent right. hundred. It's fifty dollars on olive oil. We got twenty four. 68 ounce uh, is bottles of olive oil. Uh, each one was five ninety nine at Walmart or Amazon. You know, they're as the cheapest I saw we could find was about twelve dollars. That you know, was that's really that's the cheapest. Cheap. So we got it at least half price. Uh, it officially expires in a month. But we'll probably uh, use it for the next 12 months, you know, because uh, yeah. we cook all the time. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, that's an exciting... Well, at first, it, it's funny because we always hesitate. We're like, this is a really good deal. Let's get a box. And then we're kind of standing there and we're like, let's get another box. A box has, like, six. And then we, we leave the grocery store and we, we're, like, still calculating, like, okay, this is how much it is on Amazon. This is how much it is at Walmart. We go back in. Yep. We're like, we, we're going to get 12 more bottles. Let's do it. Because uh, we will not find that deal. Again. Right. And it's one of those things where if you don't do it, then if we go back it's in a gone. week, it's all gone. Well, what's so. funny is that Sharp Shopper, um, you say that this happens when you find a good deal and you start filling your cart with it. Other people's like kind of perk up and they're like, what is that? Yeah, like, Someone why are they, found a deal. Why are they so excited? So then, yeah. so then honestly, there's been times where... We've gone back, I think the next day, where we're like, we have to go back. It's all gone. Yep. Whatever it is, coffee, olive oil, whatever. Yep. So. Yep. <laughs> all in. You got to go all uh, in. And then the other thing, just uh, kind of a random scavenger thing, is we're kind of late to the party on this, but we bought an Instapot. Instant pot. No, I think isn't I it's think called it's, Instant Pot. Is it called Instant yeah, Pot? Yeah. First of all, it's a, it's a Inst cheesy name and like the logo is super cheesy, but... Instant Pot. Okay. I want to call yeah. it Instapot, but it's not. You're right. It, it's it is called Instant it. Pot. I've been calling it. Anyway, uh, those of you who know is what this is, uh, it is a pressure cooker. Slash crock pot. Slash crock pot. But it's, it's like got great 
controller, like electronic yeah. controller for it. So, you know, unlike a crock pot that's very uh, simple and you just put a top on it and you just hit it lower high, is this is a pressure cooker. So it, you can yes. put food in there and you can cook like a roast in 15 it's minutes or a, ch a whole... What? A whole chicken, right? I mean, chicken, like, yeah. It's... Well, so the, the interesting thing about it is like there are some sophisticated crock pots. I've seen them before at like Costco. Where, but the thing about the crock pot, right? You're like, this is gonna take four hours or more. The instant pot is crazy. Like, I, I didn't understand because I'd seen some friends, like super cooking friends, and Mikey and Wendy have one, and they're like, I cooked this roast in 20 minutes. And I'm like, how is that even possible? But it's true. Yeah. Hard boiled eggs in five minutes. Five minutes. Five so. Minutes. Just Google it, Instant Pot. Uh, we'll put a link to it on our blog. Uh, the, look, people get kind of crazy about yeah, it. Yeah, because it's super cool. Like, you, you were like, I'm buying this thing. It was $100 on Amazon. Yep. Of course, anything that's $100, I'm like, you you did what? <laughs> um, what is this thing? But then we started, like, going crazy because we were like, we cooked this in 15 minutes. What are we going to cook yep. next? We have so much food in our refrigerator right now. Uh, we spent all... <laughs> yesterday, we were we watching all. Stranger Things yes. slash cooking things in the Instapot. Like, <laughs> how fast like, can we cook this? I know. So our fridge is full of, like, food that we cooked. So I will say why we're talking about this. Because as a scavenger, buying frozen meat for cheap at the grocery... You know, the discount grocery store. If you can make food for yourself for all week... You're not going to want to go out to eat and yep. you're not going to want to eat junk. You're yep. like, I have this beautiful roast that I'll just eat from all week and hard boiled eggs. And, you know, you're you're ready yep. for the week, you know. OK, let's actually talk about eBay. Yes. Isn't that what this? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anymore. About? OK. Yeah. Uh, so we went to an auction this week, uh, you know, into official auction. Uh, it, it had been yes, a while we since we'd gone. Yep. Uh, that's where we l uh, lately have have been finding a lot of our inventory, um, you know. And l it, it, like people say, it's a it's, it definitely is a commitment of time. You it know, is. it's not like just stopping into a thrift store for ten it's minutes. It's like a plan. Yeah. The one we like to go to is now two hours away from us. Yeah. So we have to. We actually rented an Airbnb the night it's before, stayed overnight. And then got up early because the auction started at 10 a.m. rather than fighting traffic and all that. Yeah. Um, okay. We made it a whole thing. And, you know, the interesting thing is you know, when we were standing there, you know, we like to go at least an hour early, go through everything, yeah. you know, uh, look at everything. You know, nowadays I see everyone's doing the scavenger calculations, you know, because most yeah. people that go to auctions, I'd say 80% of people at auctions are dealers of some kind. Yeah, I they mean, either own a store or they sell on eBay or they sell at yard sales, yeah. you know, they're dealers. And nowadays everyone has their phones out and they're like, cal I mean, they're there's no joke about it. Up. There's even this guy that has his big iPad <laughs> and like a note book and he's like he's doing, on ebay like you can see it and he or amazon and he's doing right. these calculations uh you know so it really has kind of changed things but the interesting thing is n no matter how much we plan and we'll like talk about it it's beforehand and say what we is want to get yeah. when it actually starts when when the bidding starts it's really all on you the just fly. have no idea yeah yeah i mean well what's interesting is like you'll see a table of stuff and you're like you know, I, I want some of that stuff. And you're like, wow, nobody else wants... Th this is great. Or you're like, oh, I thought those were like junky little side tables. No. Like right. everybody wants those. It goes up to 250 You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, often what will happen is, you know, there'll be something I didn't even think about buying. And then, yeah, it looks like it's, it's no one's going to buy it. And yeah. it's like $10 for a whole table of stuff. And I'll just raise my hand and be like, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take a chance on yeah, it. Yeah, And we not? always find stuff in there like th that's the great thing about table lots or box lots even um there's stuff buried in there that you're like what's this i wasn't so even it, bidding on if this. it's cheap enough it's always yeah, it's worth five, taking ten that bucks risk. why not although you know there will also be tables where i'm like there's so much good stuff here i will easily spend over a hundred dollars there was a hundred dollar table yeah. that we bought yeah and uh, i will but there's like true... i'll just keep my hand up and just like you're like till, i don't care <laughs> wait till i'm the last one standing you know and, and, and that's works. a great it feeling do, it does know? work although there are like you said most people are resellers and you're like everybody knows well, this so is good i really enjoy going together 
because, you know, we kind of do this thing where we'll trade off where it's one of us is paying attention right. and bidding and then the other person's packing. Packing. Because those table lots have a lot of stuff. Right. On them. And there's always a worry that people kind of like will snag stuff. It's it's only happened one time where that was somebody a long time ago. where I bought a table because of one thing and we didn't get to it fast enough and Someone I went it over the there table. and it was gone. It was know? a Zippo lighter, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. yeah I it mean it's really small cool. enough that someone pocketed yeah. it. Um but uh it that sucked. But that was the only look, out of all the times, yep. that was the only I think my problem though with, with auctions is because I am like annoyingly frugal and I have a really hard time spending <laughs> money. It's really hard for me to bid on stuff, like especially why, against well, other resellers. Why is that? I mean, you know, because I don't want to spend any money. Right, but <laughs> we we have enough history where we know we can sell things. I mean, yeah. you know, I think I'm just like at least give it yourself. Like, okay, I can bid up number. to thirty dollars. Yeah, know, without hesitation. Yeah, that's true. And you know, I honestly, the way I do it is, I wait to see. Because normally, someone starts the bid. Yeah. And then I just kind of see uh, where it goes. Where's it going? And then yeah. when it's hanging and the guy's like, all right, $10, anyone $12, anyone $12, then I'll jump in. Yeah. You know? um, so I don't know. It's, it's, that's why it's fun. Yeah. Okay. You know, end of the story is we, we spent $300 on the auction. We spent about $100 actually driving there, staying in an Airbnb overnight and eating. eating. So it was like $400 at the end of the day. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, right. And uh, But we got a whole truckload of stuff. You know, I've got a little small pickup and we yeah. always fill up the fill back. Up the truck. Got to strap it down, boxes. We got a piece of furniture, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, we always go through and we find, okay, this stuff is going to be $400. And that pays for everything, everything else the here. Whole trip, you know? yeah. But now we actually have to put it up on eBay. <laughs> so uh, that's where the uh, uh, that's the real in. work. Like yeah. the auction is like yeah. anyone can go to an auction, but who's gonna list it on eBay? Yeah, I mean we've actually we've definitely seen those, and they're often a younger couple yeah. that will show up there. And they're like buying like crazy. They'll buy and a box truck full. I always know those are the people that they get into the middle of their house. And, and they're, they're like, like, what? Oh, what do I do with this? You know? Yeah, I get it. You know, we also, as far as scavenging, uh, they, there's a Goodwill right next to this uh, it's grocery store we go to. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we always stop in there just to see if we can find something good. And this time... I really felt like an empty soul in this. Well, this Goodwill. was like two days after the auction, so you right. go into Goodwill and you're just like, Ugh. I don't know. Just there are times, and again, I talk about like the emotional part of like being a scavenger. You know, sometimes it will walk into a place like Goodwill where you know everything's like super organized. Yeah. It's just like it's it's like a retail store with yeah, like yeah. lines of clothes, it's like a TJ Maxx that just go back endlessly. Yeah color coordinated and it just sometimes feels just like endless because it's all the same and i think sometimes goodwills you know they kind of take the fun out of it you know and that's again why yeah i love going to the auctions or the estate sales because there's always a chance for treasure you well know? you can you can the good thing is you can change it up like yeah we've walked into a goodwill wherever and Absolutely. found great stuff and you're like wow Absolutely. i'm really glad we stopped in and then there, like we walked out empty-handed out of right. that goodwill. I didn't find a single thing. I was just like, I mean, we ugh. we we weren't even really trying. We were you know? not trying. But you know, and sometimes I'll go into goodwill. I'm really into it, and it's yeah. just like, okay, let's go through every single T-shirt. Let's like, you know, uh, right, whatever. <laughs> because like the thrift store we really like to go to, it's like a small independent one. They're they've actually started to evolve into like a goodwill. They're starting like to like. Clothing racks. Are they're very starting organized. to organize better instead of it just being piles and piles of stuff, which I just loved. It makes sense that they're doing this. They're now buying its racks. Everything's up off the floor. Things are in boxes. They're all easily accessible, and it's starting to feel like a goodwill. You know. Well, your fear is like, well, people can find stuff easier, and right. then they'll buy it all. And, and that's like, great yeah. for the store. Uh, they should do that. Yeah. Not good for us. You know. So <laughs> I will say this though: the last time we went, we still found found a ton of stuff. So yeah, I know. You know, I, I hear you, but I'm just like. Look, I'll take a road burger any day of the week over, uh, you know. Okay, a couple other things before we talk about our numbers. We've 
fi- found out something yes. cool. Okay, so on the active listings page, I was really upset when they changed it because you could only edit 200 items at a time because that's how many they show on the page. There was not that drop down menu that we had forever of 1 through 500, 501 to 1000. So you're able to do chunks of 500. They put that back. Right. I noticed yesterday they put that back. Thank God. I'm sure they heard from people that were like, you're cutting my editing abilities in half, you yep. know? And also, uh, you know, we talked about we don't like business policies because we had tried it a long time ago when it first came out. And someone called us and said, try it again. You know, either we didn't understand it or they've improved it. So uh, yesterday we actually sat down and turned business policies on. On the second store. Right. On the smaller store. It's- I will I will say this. It was like five people that called in and said it. It wasn't just one. It was like <laughs> people over and over called. I don't even think I played all the messages because I was like, okay, we we heard it. It's it's cool. Yeah. Um. So I turned it on on the second store. The reason I did it is handling time because when we went away for the auction, I was like, I'm hoping I'm not going to ship things late because stuff sells like the night before and we're at the auction. And I'm like, it would have been great if I could have just gone in there and with like two clicks changed it to two business and days. And that's what business policies do. Right, right. So the issue is, and we put a question on the uh, its form about it to see if people understand this. When we turn on business policies, it, it doesn't seem a way to pull in the current items we have in our store, right? It looks like... To me, I turned the business policy policies on. Um, I made a couple policies, uh, one for first class and priority, and one for smart post and priority. And it doesn't look like it's applying those to my current listings. So, so there's n- a no way to like it's click a category and be like put this policy on this category. You can do that. But the thing that's kind of messy that I'm seeing is like the box dimensions and the weight. So since we have, it's not just t-shirts, it's like all these random wooden boxes. Right. If I go in and edit and like put this policy in, it's like, does it erase my current weight and dimensions Mm. or does that stuff stay on touch that's what i'm a little like i'm afraid to do it and have it be like it's all one pound and you're like what right so i'm a little bit nervous about that so i would love to hear from people who turned it on later like didn't just start with it because i'm like because we because we understand that the the stuff we put up on ebay from here on out you do the business policy. Uh, you can choose which business policy. Exactly. It's just Shipping how do we policy. apply it now to 6,000 items of different just, weights oh, and sizes and all that. Yeah. And again, that's one of the things that I think always kind of... Uh, it just so. made me nervous. Like, I don't want to have people paying for things like, yep. this is one pound. So, it's you know, like, feel free to call in, email us, or the best thing is just to go on our a forum and I think you'll see the it's question that uh, yeah. Ryan had put up. And then the... And last thing is our Amazon experiment just kind of won't die. Uh, <laughs> we we want to be out of Amazon. Yeah. We don't want to be on Amazon. So we thought we had told Amazon take our entire inventory, it was like 600 items, yeah. and uh, liquidate it, we, which means I guess they take all those items, they put them in a big bin, and I guess they auction it off someplace. Yeah. And then – They supposedly give us like 20% of the profit. Which is probably nothing. We didn't care. Well, I looked the other day and I was like, there's still 200 items in our Amazon store. Well, so that that was the thing. They sent us some message like, this was repriced weird or whatever message they send. And we were like, why do we have anything in our Amazon store? You looked... It was about, yeah, almost 200 items. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Amazon, they didn't ever tell us the update of, like, did they liquidate things? How much did things sell for? Did things go back into inventory? So anyway, and then and then we look and we, you know, said, okay, well, how do I just take these 200 items and just say destroy, destroy. them or send them back to us, you know? And we find that you can't really bulk edit items. Like, I'm hoping our friend, it's Mike, says that you can choose... 50 at a time on the page and say choose these it's it's 50 and destroy them but yet you can't say just take my whole store and just like a big thing to say just, destroy it it's just like this is why i can't stand amazon so like you go in and you're like 
yes, I want to make a removal order. And they're like, okay, go add your items one by one. I mean, it sounds like I can add them right. page at a time. Well, I don't think it's, you know, I oh mean, God, look. Are you kidding? We were just complaining about eBay. It's just, you know, all these, yeah. you know, stores, they're kind of built for, I don't know, one by one. And I know there are ways where you can upload like a... Like an Excel sheet. Excel sheet like, with an order, but uh, it's just it's one of those things. I don't know how to do that. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so our Amazon experiment's done. I know it's fourth quarter for those people who are still doing it. Although I feel like I've been hearing uh, rumors or things where a lot of people that were really into Amazon, mm-hmm. like a lot of those people on uh, at YouTube, have slowly been getting out of it. And uh, I'd love to know if that's actually true. You know? Yeah. Um, like, what's the real deal? Yeah, what's the real deal? Okay, let's talk about a store uh, and the uh, numbers of our store. And this is just to help give people the uh, reality of running an eBay store. Like, the, real, the real deal. We're not uh, making a million dollars, that's for sure. But <laughs> we are making a living and owning our time. And that is by selling 35 items in our main store. It was kind of slower it's this week that's not enough i know it was slow so our total sales were about nineteen hundred dollars um now that sounds very good one item was right. a chunk of that but uh so nineteen hundred dollars buys us our time and then our yes. second store we sold 10 items for about 200 bucks those are low priced <laughs> items yes. uh so let's talk about some of the things as we sold so like it ryan said we were having a really slow week and then we sold one single item that made seven hundred dollars and that was a piece of furniture yes it was a big armoire wardrobe that came with the house we bought the rental uh the farmhouse rental it was in a storage shed and we were using it for ebay storage right so we were keeping all of our ebay stuff in that shed and this armoire had shelves in it and we were actually keeping like inventory stuff in it it. but now that we've moved all of our inventory we had this piece of furniture it was tiger oak tiger oak it's definitely from the early 1900s very nice we snapped a photo of it it sold overnight overnight yeah but we did an experiment and we'll give you an update so we put free shipping on it uh normally we put up pieces of furniture and we just say local pickup and you figure it out like you go on you ship and figure and that has shown that that takes a long time for things to sell because you have to find someone that's comfortable with setting up a shipper or they live close enough where they can come pick it up so we thought well let's put it up high and let's say it's shipping for free and we'll figure it out now the good thing about this experiment is we essentially got this piece of furniture for free because it came with the house. So we don't have any money into it. And we're like, let's just see how much it's going to cost to get it up to... It's in Long Island. Get it up to Long Island. So so we're working with a U-ship. We put out a, a, a little auction for and it. And we're trying to, to see how much you know guys bid on the job yeah. to get it up there. So far... The lowest bid's like three hundred and fifty dollars, which is I'm half like, the Whoa. price of the item, right? I know, right? So, but and and guys are, uh, are saying it's just expensive because of all the tolls and getting it through, you know, the and it's area. a big item. It's seventy two inches tall. It's not very heavy though. It's not but heavy, yeah, but it's, but, it's, but it's it's bulky, right? But I'm like, man. Whew, I'm glad someone in California didn't buy it. Like, how much would that be? You know, we would probably be losing money. Right. So you know? it's so it's it's a good experiment for us and it's like all experiments i mean we won't lose a single dime we are going to make money on this job yeah no matter what and we'll learn of like oh yeah we should probably price things like way higher three to five hundred dollars more than we want because that's how much the uh, shipping shipping is yeah but it's really cool when we first started to sell furniture three or four uh, years ago that site kind of existed but, but not, not really. really i really feel like it's gotten evolved enough to where there's quite a few you know guys or small is moving companies that just are like driving up and down coasts yep. or along the country and or individuals that just have a van that they're like i want to go yeah. up there and i want to make money it's on it's kind of like a weird like subculture yeah. you know it's like you know it, we're the sub subculture of scavengers and there's a scub, subculture of like movers of, shippers yeah so it's well there was cool. a tv show based on you ship yeah. called like shipping wars yeah uh i think that's what it was called uh, I don't know if it's still on, but it was based on that website. So it is 
I think it got more popular after that show. Yep. Uh, customer issues. You know, we had a woman. She made an offer on like a big, heavy thing. It was like a painter's box. And she made the offer. We accepted immediately. We did not hear from her at all. She did not pay. So we opened an unpaid item case. Right. And then she finally paid. Right. Uh, we, we, which is fine. But then it starts like our antennas had gone yeah. up like, uh-oh, this lady like, she you know. She made it forever. You know, this is, might be a problem. And it, it's just like we thought. She got it and she wants to return it. And she says there's something wrong. It's with the item. And she doesn't want to pay to ship. And so we could lose like... Yeah, 40 bucks, you know, yeah. because it's a heavy piece to ship both ways. So now the way we do it is we don't get into a long back and forth. She simply opened up a case to return yeah. it. The first thing we do is we call eBay. I'm just going to call. I want to see. I know what they're going to say. They're going to say accept the return, see if she ships it back, and then fight it in the beta program. But we like to call first to just talk it out with an eBay person yeah. just to see like what they think our chances are. Yeah, like, like you know, She can read through the case and be like, okay, yeah, this is a little – you know. It's funny or something. Right. Accept it back and then fight the return. Because, you know, number one is she might not actually mail it back. Right. You know, that can happen. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, number two, we can ask for, you know, its photos. So she has to document the its process. And during that thing, oftentimes a buyer who's not on the up and up will kind of uh, say things yeah. That then hint like, oh, there really isn't, isn't anything, anything wrong. wrong with it. You're yeah. just unhappy. Uh, yeah. So that's the way we deal with it. Instead of dealing directly, it's with a customer and like having a fight, you know. Yeah. Things we learned in the forum slash our email, uh, we got a nice message from a couple, Ty and uh, and uh, it's Maggie. They said that they started selling on eBay. I don't know when. I don't think too long ago. But they just paid for a trip overseas with their ebay cash yeah they said they spent 10 days in uh in uh, europe all around europe Europe. they went to rome and places like that. went to amsterdam yay and and i I guess it it was a cool story because and i swear i didn't pay to for him to say these things he says you know he had been searching for podcasts he found ours he says he just didn't believe it when we were talking about finding things for a dollar and selling for thirty dollars right and then he said he tried it and he found something at a yard sale and he flipped it you know he sold it very quickly and he made fifty dollars yeah and then he just started doing it more and now they took this big long trip and he was like wow it's real it's true it's amazing and now (laughs) now if we had a course this is when i would be like all right and you can make a million dollars too buy our course (laughs) you can make a million (laughs) but uh you know it's less than that but yeah yeah. it's cool you know and i love when people have stores and they have specific things they specific goal yeah 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 paying for their kids college or private school paying for an instant pot yep Paint off their house, paint off their car, <laughs> or just buy. Or you know, the big thing is the ultimate is is like oh, we do buying your time. You know, that's the most ultimate thing Look, in my mind. We were talking last night because we have a couple, several handful of friends who work for very big tech companies, huge, the biggest in the world, right? And like every friend we talk to, they have the best benefits. Great pay. Three weeks of vacation. The be- yeah. Like they work for the best tech companies Free in the world. Free food every day. Just, like- they get traveled around the world to go to conferences and yeah. meetups. And, and they're, they're still unhappy. Right. I'm not going to name names here. <laughs> but I'm talking like four or five people I've talked to in the last few months. And, and they're I'm like, talking about wanting to uh, leave those jobs. And, uh- look, they're, they're talking about working for other people. Or they're like, I just want to do my own thing yeah. and you're and, and from the other side of like working every day and doing rentals and doing ebay and you're like what are you talking about yeah but you're like it's because they don't have their own time yeah and that's what it like it's true it, even you know and look we hear from people who are like i love my job totally love it awesome that's so rare <laughs> but we also know a lot of people yeah like i work at google i mean i'm not yeah 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 i'm not saying that we could ever work at google but Sometimes we're like, oh, wouldn't that just be nice just to have a job? Just go to this plush office. You're paid 100K plus. You get like awesome benefits with like a retirement package. Yeah, you like get all the good three stuff. weeks paid vacation 
and part of your job is flying around the world to, to places. Like, but stuff. again, we know those kind of people who have jobs like that. And uh, I mean, maybe they're just the strange ones, but they're just like, oh, you know, I'm always on the road. It's grueling, yeah. You know, in these meetings, these inner office politics yeah. and getting passed over for promotions. The or bureaucracy like, of getting things done. That, that, yeah, that That's so, the thing is like, think about what we did this week. Like I go through, you know, there's stress. We talk about that all the time. There's always stress. <laughs> You know, again, I, I don't want people to be like, yeah. it's just like a life of leisure. No, it's not. But, okay. but I got to decide what I did every single day. I want to make a, a like a, a solid, concrete fact here. I well, feel like you struggle with the stress of yes. our business yes. much more than I do. Yes. I think I'm much better at realizing, like having perspective yes. of just like – and maybe it's yes. just because I've worked a lot more of those jobs like – you you have worked a like, lot more of those. Jobs. You went independent much yeah. at a much a younger age. Like yeah. when I met you, you were twenty five. Twenty four, right? yeah. yeah. And I was in my early thirties yeah, and was, so I was, I was like young. I've worked a lot of I'm like, so I don't have to every do day I'm like, Okay, there's a little bit of stress here, there's some stuff we have to do, but I'm like, this is so much better. I think <laughs> I really I need you to learn to like like recognize like these are great choices to have yeah. in in a in a lot of things we think we have to to do. We really don't have to do them. Well, I think I'm getting better at that where, right. where I'm like, what is it like for me? It's like prioritizing. Like there's a, there's like a one, two, three list where you're like, what's the major priority right now? Right. That's why. Like, like what do we have to do today where our business won't fall apart? Right. I feel like that's very few things we have to actually do. Right. It's most of it is like, these are the things we want to do to make our business better better right you know to right. yes to 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 do cooler things sure i mean so, like it's for instance it's on a sunday today's we're, sunday yeah we're taking some of our time out to record this podcast and then you're gonna have to edit this thing yeah and i know it's a pain in the butt but you know what honestly if for some reason editing this podcast is gonna make your life a miserable wreck <laughs> Don't just, do we it. don't have to do this podcast. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is just purely for fun yeah. and to have like a community of people to interact with. Right. But ultimately, this thing here is not like like there's an employer who's saying like if you don't do this, I'm going to fire You're you. You're fired. You know? Yeah, exactly. And so, um, well, yeah. So that's that's what I've been trying to do is to like prioritize things. Like I have to ship every day. Well, right. Sunday you don't, but it kind of helps to get it done. So it's done for Monday. You know, so so you, you kind of have to be like, what has to get done this minute? What has to get done pretty soon? And what can just like wait till there's like a free moment, which there. And then the other thing is. And, you know, I know this. Anyone that runs their own business says the same thing. I work harder than I do if I work for somebody else. It's right. seven days a week. It's 24 hours a day. Yeah. I get that. But, you know, anyone that runs their own business needs to learn to find those things they love to do. You know? Right. And I think if you still haven't found that thing yet where if you can be like, oh, I can just do this thing and it's pure bliss. Yeah, no. You know? That's just not. I don't know. Yeah. You know, some people play video games. Right. Some people watch people playing a video <laughs> On I know, YouTube. I know somebody like that. That's me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, taking walks. Right. Cooking. I mean, you know, it's like the thing like, what's your hobby? I mean, right. it's true. You know, yeah, some like, people love do do? to garden. Some right. Some people play golf. I mean, you know, and yeah. I feel like you quite haven't found that thing like, what do you like to do yeah. where you can just like turn your brain off? Right. And, uh, right. I do like to watch stuff on Netflix. There you go. Um, I do. You're like allowed to, to do that. I know, but I don't. In the allow middle of the day, you it. can just come and watch a movie. I know. You know. I've been getting better. Like the other day, in the it was last Thursday. You were like, "Let's just take a hike." Yep. And I was like, "What are you talking about?" But it was like we didn't have to do anything till oh, later. We live right by a mountain, so it's like many mountains. Yeah. yeah. So so you were like, "I know this one." trail it's a it's literally eight minutes away from our house in right. the car uh which is crazy you're like it's it's right there um it's beautiful so yeah so it's things like that where you're like you just have to be like nothing has to get done for the next three hours so take that time you know so i'm desperately learning how to do that yeah. um well that's good i mean just look you know I'm just the, this is a total the first tangent. step the first step is just admitting you have a problem. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, workaholic so, problem. So there you go. I know. Yep, I you totally know. do. Okay, so let's take uh, any questions or we'll play comments that people have sent in. On the voicemail line, the phone number is 540-407-8486. It's just a voicemail line. You have three minutes to leave a message. Hi, my favorite scavengers. This is Tracy from Access Vintage in California. I just listened to the gentleman that had a a scam happen, basically switched out or defected items sent back, and it just happened to me. First time in five years owning my store on eBay. It was a Wyland, who is an artist in Hawaii, who does a lot of under underwater marine mammal type stuff. It was a dolphin sculpture. It was a $300 item, and I shipped it out, and she said that she was a collector and that it wasn't to her liking. No problem, 100% satisfaction. Ship it back. We'll refund you in full. Well, as soon as I opened up, I could see it was not the same item. Hers was actually nicer than mine, (laughs) believe it or not. It had a more polished, newer look to it, but the ocean base that the dolphins were on was there was a huge piece broken off, and it didn't happen in shipping. This is something that she divulged when she emailed me, too. Anyway, long story short, you could also tell by the signature and the date at the base of the sculpture was completely different than the one that I had sent her. So, and I'm pretty meticulous about inspecting my items. I wouldn't have missed something that big as far as the breakage goes. I've spent a month and a half on the phone back and forth with eBay. They told me to send in an affidavit with photographs to prove that this was not the same item, that she had all likelihood to have another one since she collected these particular this particular artist. What I really found out over all this time, and this is what I wanted to share, is that it doesn't seem that to me, and it was sort of confirmed by a manager, I escalated to a supervisor, that they even review cases anymore. There are so many hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions and shady stuff that does go on every now and then that basically if you own a store, this is what I was told several times, that you you just take it as a loss. It's shrinkage. That that's the cost of doing business. And the supervisor that I finally escalated it to said that they should have never requested photographs or an affidavit from me, that they don't really do that anymore. They don't have the bandwidth or the employees to review that many cases. And so they will, upon occasion, do a one-time courtesy if it has not happened to you before and you're a seller. But usually they won't do it if you own a store and you run eBay as a business. It's usually only for... Uh, regular just eBay sellers. Okay, well, this is a really good call, and we appreciate this info. You know, it's always good when we share with each other what you actually get told by someone on eBay. Yeah. Uh, you know, although I always want that stuff to be in writing somewhere, like these policies should be on their a website, but it's interesting if they actually tell you in person. Uh, that's fascinating. I don't know if that's ever happened to us where someone did a bait and switch. Has like this, sent back something that wasn't the same thing? I mean, thing? Uh, we've been selling since 2008, you know, thousands and thousands of items, and we've never had a bait and switch. So I know it has happened to other people, but I just want to be very clear. I think it's a rare occurrence. Yeah. Maybe it happens it's more often in certain categories than others. Like some people in the electronics say it happens a lot. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, if that's true, I would just stay out of those, you know – those categories, you know, because it is, again, a he said, it she said thing, you know, where how does eBay figure out who's telling the Mm -hmm. truth, you know? Yeah, Uh, it's hard. And and it is interesting. I I can imagine eBay is just overwhelmed with cases and they just can't deal with every single one. It's too bad, though. I mean, like, she sold a $300 item. Right. I mean, that's no. a lot of money for a I small hear you. business. I mean, you we're know? not the ones to say, to just take that, like, oh, it's just shrinkage. I mean, yeah, that's, no, absolutely. I'd be so out of my mind. For a I'd small, like, it's business, $300 is a lot of cash. And also, it's just like the whole, like, just feeling like you've been, uh, it's ripped off. Yeah. I mean, it'd be one thing if we're selling, like, you know, cheap headphones or something. Yeah, and you're it's like, like, oh, uh, you know, I sell a thousand a week. Oh, yeah. like I lost two. Yeah, no, big no deal. that's that totally uh, sucks. I mean, I am always like, 
take it as far as possible right. without it causing like in internal damage to it's your mind you know like if you don't want <laughs> to sounds be, like she did too she's right. like i'm ta- i'm doing everything possible right. to, to figure because this out because if you don't because if you do it's want to make it painful for that it's buyer because yeah you because don't want them to, you. to do it other times also right. if you just it's want to let ebay know that it's a problem so With if this, this buyer, person yeah. does it again there's a record like, right. oh, we've had complaints about this. So yeah. actually there's like a, you know, yeah. there's a, 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 a record of damage. I do want to say it's unfortunate that eBay would be like, we just don't have time. It's like, you know what? You're like a billion dollar company. That's what should be right. like the actual yeah. priority. Well, I mean, we've seen, and it's one reason why we're not on Amazon. I mean, we always felt like Amazon kind of, got out of the, the, the business of customer a service with a seller where oh, man. they just were just flat out and they and they even send you a note. Yes. You know, we assume that you're gonna have to take a loss and you're gonna make it up by selling a lot more. So we can't. So deal just with shut this, up. Basically. And so that's kind of baked in. That's why it's kind of comforting that eBay still has kind of a customer a service. And I How don't know. long will it last? It's for us. That's why we we're always like, don't go through the automated case like system. case because Just, it, yeah because they'll always go against you. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we have pretty good you know it's percentage of calling and finding someone who feels empowered and they help us out. But it's because you know? we have anchor support. Yeah, really Plain and simple. I do not feel like the other reps are empowered. I'm hoping that the anchor style support just becomes all of their support. Right. Supposedly, they had that new thing called concierge. Yeah. Uh, it's service. So we'll see. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, it is true. There will be times where we just get kind of screwed, you know, and where it doesn't feel fair. We don't feel like we're being helped, but we're just like, well, that's just part of this yeah. business. And yeah. If selling in art or selling in some category seems more painful than others, we just stop selling that thing. You know, yeah. there have been items where we were just having problems so much that we just stopped selling just that thing. Selling like that thing. typewriters, Oof. we we no longer sell vintage so typewriters. Problems. Look, I sold a lot of typewriters with no problems, and then they just started piling up, and I was like, I'm not. Just where people are like, oh, these. this key d- doesn't work, and we're like, oh, are you kidding? I me? can't take it back. It costs too much. So. Yeah. Hi, Jay and Ryan. <clears throat> My name's Kenny. Uh, I live in St. Louis, and I was just calling you. I love the show, and uh, I heard you talking this week about that you were going to go to uh, auctions, and uh, I thought I'd call him with a little tip on those, uh, and also about eBay auctions. Uh, I actually work at an auction. I do the clerking and ringing for a local auction here in St. Louis, and uh, my tip is kind of dealing with sourcing at auctions, because I I do all my sourcing from auctions, or most of it at least, and uh, a lot of times you'll get confronted when you go to an auction with a large collection of whatever, whether it's, uh, you know, figurines or um, you know, collectibles or, or uh, plates or, you know, whatever you got. If you got a large number of things, uh, what I often look for is whatever stands out among that collection. And uh, <clears throat> they look for something that's either odd or weird or has extra time or effort put into it that, that looks unusual. And to give you an example, uh, Last week, we had an auction, and it was a radio repair shop, a guy who did it out of his garage. It wasn't his collection of radios. It was his shop that was for sale. Apparently, he had fallen ill and hadn't used the shop in probably 15 years or so, and so there was dusty and dirty, and everything was just kind of jumbled in there. And looking around, I was looking for something unusual or odd that stood out. And uh, amongst all the vacuum tubes that they have, which are used in the old radios, there, they were boxes of them in drawers. And I saw one up on a shelf that was mounted on a piece of wood and uh, no wires on the wood or it didn't look like it was used for anything. It was just a vacuum tube that somebody had taken the time to mount on a piece of wood and then put it up on a shelf. So I thought that's unusual. So I that's what I look for, something unusual to get a point to research from, whether any kind of collection like that or when there's too much stuff to look, I look for something weird and research that. Well, it turns out this tube I couldn't find, So and I'm pretty good at research, so... Uh, I found ones that were, you know, close, similar, but when it comes to vacuum tubes, people actually collect those. And so similar isn't good enough. It, it could be off by one number or letter, and 
be a whole different ball game. So couldn't find it. So I thought, well, it's rare. I'm going to have a friend buy it for me. I had to leave the auction. So I told them, bid up to 30 bucks. Um, and they bid, I got it for 1250. Got it home, did more research on it and, uh, still couldn't find very much. Couldn't find the exact same one. So I figured it's pretty rare. So that's my tip for real auctions is to look for the unusual things. And that moves me on to eBay auctions, which is, I use when I can't find um, a price on something. So I'm not real comfortable with this vacuum tube. I'd say most of my auctions or most of my sales are through buy it now. But if I can't find a price, I want to use an auction. So what I do is I set it at a, a, point, a price at which I know I won't be disappointed at. I don't do 99 cent auctions. So in the case of this vacuum tube that I was talking about, I thought, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be unhappy if I get 85 bucks for it. Uh, I put it up there for 85 bucks. I opened it yesterday on Sunday. Um, and uh the 22nd and it should be done by the time you do your next podcast but uh i've already gotten a bid on it so i know i got the 85 dollars at least out of it and it could be much higher some of those go for a lot of money but uh i didn't sell it for 99 cents and think ah now i gotta ship something that i only got 99 cents out of so i set my prices and then if it doesn't sell for uh then i then i put it at a buy it now price that i'm also happy with but when i don't know the upper limits i always want to do an auction at least in my opinion because it sure bothers me when i put something in it buy it now and it sells in the first five minutes and i think boy i probably left a lot of money on the table so anyways that that was my tips for our, our tricks for uh getting a successful auction hope maybe you can use that or it helps you out sometime Thanks for the show, guys. Love you. Have a great week. Bye. So those are really good uh, pieces of advice. I think you're the first person that's ever worked at an auction that has uh, called in or emailed yeah. us. Uh, I'd love to hear more from people that actually uh, work at auctions and kind of hear their you know, take on people buying stuff for uh, eBay. Um, I agree. Uh, that's what I do. When we go to auctions, there will just be so much stuff. I mean, um, I mean imagine it. It's often – a single home or multiple homes of stuff that is just laid out yeah. and it all gets sold off within four hours. So it, there's a lot of stuff to have to uh, sift through. So I'll, I'll look at a table of stuff and I'll find that one thing where I'm like, that's what that's I want. That's interesting. You know, I can sell that one thing for $50 or $100 and then it doesn't yeah. matter what anything else is because I know I'll sell other stuff too, you know. Yeah, like so. like there's this one table that we bought, the first table we bought. I think we bought it for like forty, fifty dollars for the whole table. And we saw these vintage, true vintage, like um Henkel's knives, like big, beautiful, totally real, made in Germany. And we were like, That's why I'm buying the table. And then when I was packing the table up, all these like old dudes <laughs> They were like, do you want to sell the knives? I was like, no, that's why I bought the table. Get out of here. Shoo, shoo. Hey, little lady. I was like, no. I bet you don't know what to do with those knives. That's what I wanted. Yeah, right. (laughs) Get away. But then, you know, one knife will sell. We'll buy the whole table. And then there's all this other cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, And yeah, and then I agree, uh, you know, it happens very often. It's a very rare thing. To scavenge something that you can't find out, it's what the item is. I mean, right. nowadays with the internet, with this long history of people uploading stuff to it, it seems like almost everything, you can eventually find what it is. And what's great is when you can't find it, that's that's actually a good yeah. sign in my mind. And so, yeah, we've heard that same strategy where then you put a price that you feel comfortable with and then allow people to to – to in you know to uh, it bid on it and the hope is if you get a bidding war and it sells for you know a thousand dollars that's cool I guess we're still kind of so anti auction we like it to do it the other way we like to think of the craziest price we can think of and put that at buy it now with make offer and then let people make offers to bring it down right. and then so if we start getting a bunch of offers that are like. Why don't we say we put up for five hundred dollars and we start getting offers and they're all about three hundred? Then we kind of know, okay, right, three hundred is kind of what the you know price is going to be, and then we'll try and get the one you yeah. know, that we like. So exactly. that's just that's just for us because I mean, again, the auction it's just such a, a specialized thing. I mean, the most an auction can be is what ten days, I think. Uh, I mean, yeah. so you just have to hope that those people that are trying to find that thing are online during that 10-day period. Looking for that thing. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, but, hey, it's whatever works.
Hi, Ryan and Jay. This is Marcy from Kansas. Hey, I had a situation I just wanted to run by you and get your thoughts on. I had a bone growth stimulator. Um, it wasn't forced. It was my own personal one from when my son had a broken bone. And I listed it on eBay. Uh, I listed it at nighttime, and when I woke up that morning, it had sold and been paid for. So I went ahead and shipped it out. And later on that day, about 3 o'clock that afternoon, I got a message from eBay saying, your listing has been removed uh, due to unable to sell medical equipment that requires a prescription. I don't even remember getting a prescription for it, but I guess I did. But um, I'm wondering, since the deal is done and it's been paid for and shipped, if there will be anything that I have to do or will eBay refund that person's money and make them send it back. I was just wondering if you've ever had that situation and uh, what you did about it. Thanks. Love your podcast. Bye. Yes. Uh, you cannot sell or eBay does not allow selling like a medical equipment that's kind of specialized or yeah, that takes yeah. like their things or like you can't sell those things where they have the pads and they a shock you, yeah, you know, to bring you back to life, or although sometimes you'll find those at random, like right, or or like, like hey, it, breathing apparatuses. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's all for a safety, I guess. It's just like you can't sell, is you know, it's prescription, like a drug on there. Yeah, yeah, it's medication because they don't want people buying that stuff and hurting themselves anyway. But the thing is, that stuff can be found on eBay. Right, you know, occasionally. and they sometimes catch you. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they they take it down before it got sold. If you shipped it out already, yeah. So I if think the you're deal's good. Done. We we've had that happen where um, it's it, a done deal. It wasn't medical things. It was like weird. I don't know what it was like a weird wooden product where they're like you're not allowed to sell this wood or something really. Simple well, we've like had it that. when we were selling. Uh, it's military stuff. A we military would buy big, uh, lots of stuff from the government, and right. it was you know, and there would be stuff where like you can't sell this specific uh, military item. Or whatever you know? is a random item yeah. that you're like, what? This is not anything dangerous. It's yeah. a pair of gloves or something. But, uh, yeah. I mean, but 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 my point is that yes, they will like delete an item off of eBay. Even after it's been paid for and you've shipped it. And you're like, but it's already done. What does it matter? Well, I mean, I do wonder what happens if the buyer gets it and they're like, oh, I don't – this thing doesn't work or I yeah, like, send it back. But there's no, no item anymore. The item. I assume I then eBay would probably make you give the money back. But as long as the buyer doesn't say a word, it's a done deal. I mean, yeah, so it is weird. It's kind of good that it, that they caught it after it got shipped. And I think they do that because they don't want it to show up on the – completed listings they're like there's no record of this item which is odd i know hi it's kate i just have a question about multiple order listings slash multiple listing orders i recently had somebody buy five uh plates from me the i noticed that the the shipping the size of the shipping box did not automatically get bigger within eBay, so I ended up with a massive shipping overage payment due on my end because um, eBay, you know, the shipping calculator said shipping five plates would would happen in the same box as shipping one plate. Is there anything that I can do short of telling a person not to pay until they're invoiced uh, to keep this from happening again in the future. All right, thanks so much. Bye. Okay, so what I understand oh, about like this. eBay, oh, like yeah. I hate this stuff. I hate combined shipping. It's a nightmare in eBay. Uh, it makes no sense. I've had that happen before too. Where, <laughs> it's a nightmare. Where someone's like, I want like six of these, and then it's like first class shipping, and you're like, what the heck? Yeah, for one, but there there are like combined shipping rules which. I actually tried to apply to a listing recently of multiples, and I was like, I don't even see how to do this. Like, I don't understand where it lives. Or so, so what you're supposed to do is be like, here's my combined shipping rule for this listing. 
if they want two plates, add an extra four dollars to shipping. If they want five, you know, each each additional item, it's four extra dollars for shipping. I mean. You're really just guessing. You're like, I don't know. It might be this much extra with two plates. I have no idea. Um, you know, so so there are ways to add that for multiples. They don't make it easy. I think they've changed it. I'm sure there are people who do it all the time who can answer. So hopefully uh, it would be awesome if you posted this to the forum. <laughs> But I don't have the answer because I also am confused by it. I think like when it, when it, you sell on eBay, it, you just have to accept – it's like you're driving like an old car. <laughs> and you just have to learn all the little quirks and you're driving down the road and something's going wrong. And it, you're like driving the car while you're reaching around trying to like turn something to you make sure it works. It. That's just the way it yeah, is. Just... And and if you're fighting it any other way, it's like you're fighting some old car. It's like you just can't do it. You know? Also, Kate, don't sell plates one by one. Yeah. That's my answer for you. Just sell them as a lot of five. Uh, yeah, instead I, of I, selling one plate for $5, sell five plates for $25. You yeah, know? I, I never like to break up China lots. First of all, I hate China. Second of all, when I do find it and I do like it, I like to try to sell it all together. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Now if you've opened a can of worms and I'm going to end it real it's quickly. <laughs> if we buy like 30 pieces, we don't sell 30 pieces at one time. We just break right. it down into we'll sell these five small salad plates. Right. And then these three big plates and then these four cups. So we do sell them as lots. We just don't sell the whole lot. Yeah. And we don't sell it individually. individually. But, you know, you should do it. Stop opening you. up worms. Sorry. Hey, Jay, Jay and Ryan. Hey, I wanted to give a call based on a couple of things I heard in the, the last podcast. Just a, a little bit about me. My store is Willis and & Sons, and I sell with my three teenage boys. We just hit the, the garage sales and, and flip it for, for profit. I also work full-time, so we do this on the side. But a couple of things that you talked about in your, your last podcast, one thing you mentioned, index funds. So that's one thing that I do with, with my sons is a certain percentage of what they sell. I'll put it in an index fund, and we've been doing this about a year and a half, two years, and it's been, been fun watching that build. The other thing that we do with index funds is all of our tax money that we're putting to the side for the end of the year, we'll put that in an index fund just so that that's accumulating interest. The other thing that you mentioned in your, your podcast was wanting to sell everything in preparation for you moving into your storage, putting everything on auction. I know you guys talk a lot about experiments, and one experiment that, that we did was based off of what we were noticing this last summer versus the summer before was it was just extremely slow. And doing research on the Cosini score, I noticed that stagnant set or stagnant inventory hurt your Cosini. So the experiment that, that we did was we took this leap of faith where we – ended our entire store. We have about a thousand items. And then rather than relisting, we do sell similar. And that way it's a, a fresh listing on everything. And I can tell you the, the next week our sales were just probably double what it was the, the week before. And these were all old items that I know for a fact would not have sold had we not done that. So it does take a little bit of time to, for a thousand items, it probably took about an hour, hour and a half to, to do that. But that is something that I'm looking to do probably once a quarter or, or at least twice a year and ha didn't have any problems doing that. So that might be something that you consider trying to, to do for, for a week or two prior to putting everything on, on auction, see how it works for you guys. So anyways, hope this uh, call came out okay. I'm actually driving to work. 4.30 in the morning, but hope you guys are doing well, and I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Bye. Okay, first of all, you're amazing. You have three teenage sons and a full-time job, and this is your hobby. Yeah, I've been selling, and it's so <laughs> smart, you know, like play, play a money into index funds, oh, and, and don't let them be able to touch it. Don't touch uh, it. Just so, because they'll spend it in their 20s to buy, like, a motorcycle, to, you know, like, put some lock on it. I wonder it. who did that. Yeah, that, that Jay? that's this guy. <laughs> That's this guy. Yeah, my my dad one time he put uh, seven thousand dollars into like a mutual fund for his three kids, and I'm um, one of those kids. And then he gave us, you know, he gave us access to the account. 
And when I was like in my 20s, I bought or actually my teens, I bought a motorcycle. I never heard this story yep. until this it's moment. It's the most depressing thing. Like if I had, you know, I was like 16 it's when he did that. And if I hadn't touched it, it'd probably be worth like, you know. And that was 20 years ago. Yeah, it would have been worth so Jay, much money. you're killing me. I know. You, ki- you killed me yep. just now. Well, <laughs> there you go. So learn from my painful it's mistake. Don't give your kids access to the index oh, from like yeah. uh you know, say you'll get access to it when I die or something, you know. Or when you're forty five. When you uh, wanna buy a house. Ugh. But that's cool. It sounds like it's fun for you guys. And then the whole thing about ending and re listing mm-hmm. is so uh, similar. Right. Yeah, it's 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 a way yeah. to do it. A yep. uh, thousand listings. Look, if I had a thousand listings, I'd be like, "What a cute little store!" Ugh, I have six thousand listings, so oh. it's. it's it, it, I mean, look, a thousand look, listings is amazing for for what the time he probably has. To no, but into. so so I'm not. Look, tons of people have a thousand listings, and they make as much or more than we do. Uh, it's incredible. That's amazing. I think just our point is, yeah, I mean, you know, some people, they end their uh, listings and resell. We've tried that be before where, where we've like ended every single 6,000 items. Yeah. We've uh, relisted all of them. Sell somewhere. So they're brand new. And honestly, for us, we did not see any jump in sales at all. Yeah. And so it taught us it's not it worth it to, for us. It sounds like it, you did the same experiment and it, you said and it, it, you, it you sold twice as much. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's so true. that's obviously it's worth the time. Hey, Dan Ryan. It's Heather outside Richmond, Virginia. I am calling to respond to your last caller on this week's podcast, which was um, a situation with the shipping being suspicious having it shipped out and having that um, transaction be suspicious. So I'm calling because this actually happened to me um, a couple of months ago. It was for a $9 old Bible. It was a King James Version Falling Apart Bible, 9 bucks plus shipping. And I shipped it out of the country somewhere because it was through GSP. And I don't remember what country I shipped it to. But I shipped it. Um, and about three weeks later, I got that same email from eBay saying, please cancel this transaction, don't refund any money, don't do anything if you've already sent it, you know, whatever. Um, but this was a suspicious activity, which I thought was really strange considering it was a $9 King James Bible. <laughs> um, so I kept an eye on my PayPal, to, and I was already out of the Bible. I mean, it was long gone. Um, so I kept an eye on my PayPal account to see if it was going to be refunded out of my account back to whoever purchased it, uh, perhaps fraudulently, and it never um, posted. So I still have my money. That person has their item, um, but I received that email saying that it was perhaps fraudulent. I thought that was very bizarre um, and just wanted to share with your listeners and with you guys and that last guy that, yeah, that has happened. (laughs) <laughs> it's very strange when it does. Okay, love the podcast. Keep it up. We'll talk soon. Bye. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird. But you still have your money, which is good. And what's funny is you sent it to Global Shipping Program. So you're like, eBay's sending it to whatever country this is going to, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. not like they stopped it in transit. Like, don't send this along. Like, it sounds like it got to the Yeah, place. I mean, it's like we said. It, it, it makes it so much easier. If you just think of eBay as this old car, you're driving down the street at 100 miles an hour, and you just, you know, funny noises are going to happen, little screws are going to fall out, and you just do the best to keep it going, you know? Yeah. And and ignore those falling screws. Yeah. I mean, I just wonder if it's like someone orders something and then their spouse is like, what is this? It calls eBay. I never ordered this thing. And they're yeah. like, it's not. Oh, no, it's fraudulent. And it's like, no, it's not. You know, it's yep. just one of those things. Maybe. Okay, that is it for the podcast this week. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum. You can call and leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. Please remember you have three minutes to leave a message. That's it. And then you get cut off. The phone number is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video currently brought to you by Stephen Schultz about how much stuff he sold, what he sold it for, what he sold. It's very cool. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube, so you always get the latest episode. 
you can listen to our other podcast about our rental businesses. And that's at shampooandbooze.com. You can rent our vacation houses. Um, and cat, the links, the links are on our sidebar on both of our blogs. And we're ending this podcast. No, we are. Hang on real quick. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. So uh, I I just had this thought. So it's a rainy day. Is anyone listening to this right now? I don't know. (laughs) Anyone who actually is hung on, if you can hear this final thing. So like here's an example of like let's have some fun today. So it's – there's a movie at 1.30 that we could go to and it's a rainy day. We could go see a matinee. We could have lunch and then go and watch – a movie and enjoy our life. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So now that. this podcast is ending. In three, two, two one. one. Bye.